Hey everyone, so um, two years ago I did uh, Advent of Parents where I tried to blog about closure every day of the Advent. Uh, last year I did the more popular uh, Advent of Code, uh, did some YouTube videos um, where uh, every day I did some streaming and then later released the videos about solving these Advent of Code. Um, problems you can find those uh, as a playlist on the Lambda Island profile on YouTube um, this year I'll be doing something slightly different uh, I've been meaning for a while to make some new videos about witchcraft which is uh, our library for uh, doing sort of interactive coding with uh, Minecraft um, and a lot has happened there I have a few videos online about that but a lot has changed a lot has gotten better uh, so let's dive in. So one of the big things since the last video is that uh, we now basically support any bucket-based Minecraft servers. So Minecraft Mojang releases their official server and people do all kinds of different ways to, to mod it. Uh, but one of the, the ways of modding it that's been around for a long time is these different servers which all implement this common API um, so, so basically these are projects that modify the Mojang official server to sort of add on support for this stable API, which is the bucket API, um, so that you can write your plugins and your code using the bucket API, and it sort of works across versions, across servers. Uh, and so that's what we've been targeting from the beginning with Glowstone. Uh, but so now we've actually made sure that we're compatible also with the, the, the most popular other ones, which are Spigot and Paper. Um, and I, in particular, have been enjoying Paper, so that's what I'll be showing you. Um, so Paper MC, you go to Downloads. Um, this is also an opportune time because uh, Minecraft 1.18 just came out. We've got a bunch of new biomes and stuff. Uh, and so that's the other thing besides being compatible just with these different server implementations. Um, we've also done some stuff uh, to make sure it's easier for us to support multiple versions. Uh, of Minecraft on a single code base. So the stable version of Glowstone still uses the Minecraft 1.12 um, block types and all of that, whereas now we're already at 1.18 for the for the other ones. Um, and, and Glowstone's targeting that as well, of course, with their with their upcoming version. Um, but so that, you know, we kind of done a couple things. And maybe in a future video I can dive into some of the cool tricks we've done there to, to support all that. In this video, trying to not to make it too long, just kind of want to show how to get started. Um, another thing that's new is that we now have a Witchcraft plugin. So there's the Witchcraft project on GitHub, but there's also the Witchcraft plugin project. And so this is now the recommended way uh, to run the whole thing, uh, to get you know your end REPL connection, etc. So basically, if you've seen the old videos, I would start my Minecraft server, my Glowstone server, from a closure REPL. I would first start closure and from inside closure run Minecraft. With the plugin, it's the other way around. You run your Minecraft server the way you would normally run your Minecraft software server. Just drop in the plugin and you're off to the races, uh, which definitely for people coming more from the Minecraft world is gonna seem more familiar. Um, so let's look at that. If you download this, you're gonna get a jar um, and I'm just gonna clean this up again um, and uh, start with that. So this is an executable jar. Um, that's how most servers come. And so you just uh, execute it with Java jar. Uh, I'm using Java 117 from OpenJDK. Um, I think 117 is actually, or 17 is necessary now, uh, definitely for the client, I think also for the server. Um, so, and then you just say Java jar paper. Uh, this is gonna download the official Mojang server, patch it, do some funny stuff with it, uh, and then run it. Uh, yeah, so you see applying patches, loading libraries, does a bunch of stuff, and then it exits. Uh, and you'll see at this point that it's already created a bunch of files. This is basically why I wanted to run it the first time. It's created this Euler.txt, which creates Euler equals false. So Euler is the end user uh, license agreement. Basically, it asks you to explicitly say that you've read and agreed to Mojang's license. Um, so 
we're just going to copy over an Euler which has Euler is true. Um, and now we can go ahead and run it again. Um, Server.properties, not super interesting right now, but it could be interesting. There's a whole bunch of stuff in here. And especially uh, there should be a seed in here, or at least you can configure a seed in here, a world seed or a level seed, I think it's called, um, if you want to control how uh, your worlds are generated. And you can find you know cool seeds online that give you like specific cool generated worlds. We'll just let it pick a random seed. So we've agreed to the Euler. Um, let's run this again. Um, and now uh, even more stuff should be happening. It pops up this GUI um, where you can kind of see, you know, the load and uh, the, the logs as that are also showing up here. Um, if you pass an extra no GUI option to the server, that's not going to be the case, which I generally do. I don't really need this. Um, so now our server is running. It started a bunch of, it created a bunch of initial worlds. Uh, gonna close it once more. Uh, you'll see now there's even more stuff going on here. And in particular, we got a plugins directory. So um, if you go to witchcraft plugin releases uh, and you download the plugin for your server type and server version. So in my case, that's paper 118. Uh, and then you just drop that into that directory. Uh, I'm just going to do it from my local build target, uh, witchcraft for paper, 118, shaded into plugins. Um, if your exact server isn't on here, you can try some of the others. There's a good chance that they will actually work um, or just ping us, uh, maybe leave a, a GitHub issue should be relatively easy for us to add builds um, for these other servers. It really just depends on a different API uh, dependency for their specific flavor of the bucket API. But since we use so little of it in the plugin itself, um, I think most of the time that's not going to be a big deal. Um, so let's start this once more. I'm going to also say no GUI. And so now, um, once it kind of starts booting up and loading plugins, you'll see here witchcraft, enabling witchcraft. Uh, no witchcraft Eden found creating default, no depths Eden found creating default, loading depths Eden, uh, require land on witchcraft, and then we got a bunch of reflection warnings, which I probably should try to fix, um, but it seems like we can, uh, it more or less boots up fine. Um, so let's actually see if we can connect to it from Minecraft first. So I'm using MultiMC as a launcher. I already added the 118 instance here uh, in my configuration. Uh, where is it? Edit instance settings. Uh, you'll see that I've also configured it to make sure it's using the right Java 17 Java executable. Um, now you can use the vanilla, you know, Mojang launcher that you get when you download Minecraft. Uh, and make sure that you install 118 there. That should work too. So now that it's running, we don't need this anymore. And now we can say multiplayer. So I already added a server here. So basically, let me let me do that again. Uh, yeah, delete this. Add a server. I'm gonna call it. Uh, Runs the default port to 5565. Done. Connect to that. All right, and here's our new world. Um, and we've spawned on top of a birch tree, it seems. Uh, yeah, we'll have a, a better look in a second what uh, you know what this world gives us. Um, that's already cool. We get a little bit of a of a. I always have to go high up first to kind of see where we are, but not too much to be seen yet. Okay. Anyway, um, you know, we could just start playing Minecraft from here, but of course, we're here to do some coding. So I'm in Emacs now. So here I'm actually in my my cauldron project. So. Um, 
you can find a bunch of example code in the witchcraft uh, repo, but a lot of my own tinkering, uh, and a lot of this is very messy, but it does give you an idea of the kind of things you can do with witchcraft, all go into this, this cauldron repo. So I created a new REPL session here, event 2021, um, and so from here, Ah, yeah, and then the other thing, the, if, if, if you switch to your editor and then Minecraft does, uh, does this, that's kind of annoying. So to prevent that, uh, you go back to Minecraft, back to game, and you say you hold F3 and then press P. It should say debug puzzle most service disabled, and now I can Alt-Tab or however you switch to your editor. So from here, I'm going to do just a, a CIDR connect, so basically whatever your editor does to connect to an NREPL server. Uh, and so that's running on the local host for 25555. So the Minecraft is 65, the NREPL is 55. Connect to that. Uh, sure, CIDR, whatever. Just do the thing. And. Uh, here we are. Okay, so um, can we evaluate stuff? We can. Um, so we can, for instance, say WC player, and that returns craft player name Sunny Plexus. So that's me. Uh, and then we can do something like get the location of the current player. So you know we're we're connected. Um, we are, you know, we're in business. Um, let me actually maybe also go here and punch a tree so that this thing goes away. Yeah, there you go, we punched a tree. Good job, everyone. Um, yeah, let's maybe start with a little bit of, a little bit of administration. So one thing that I'd like to do here is set game rule, do daylight cycle false. Uh, is that not how it works? Oh, the capacity of the world. Um, just the default world, right? Yeah, there's our world. So with that, it should just stay. Uh, yeah, so time no longer moves forward. Um, because you know when you're coding and then suddenly it turns night and zombies start attacking and it's you know that's not what we're here for. Okay, um, let's first uh, let's maybe just give ourselves flying. Um, yeah, so you can give it a username, which is probably a little bit of a better practice. So yeah, now we can fly. Just kind of want to find a slightly more open area. So I was thinking, how far am I in for today? Uh, 13 minutes. I was thinking of maybe going up to something like 20 minutes. So I still got time to try to show a little bit of API stuff. Uh, and in particular, I was thinking maybe we can, oh, there's a huge, yeah. So this is the Caves and Cliffs part two. And I feel like we're already seeing some of the results here, but um, I just want to find a place that's a little bit more open that isn't full of forest yet where I can put a Christmas tree uh, as sort of a first uh, little uh, creative coding thing. Uh, there's definitely a lot of forest going on. Let's maybe just go straight land inwards, see if we hit another biome. Um, the other thing I sometimes do here is just kind of randomly teleport to places. So let's see, we are going towards positive X. Actually, yeah, I can increase my speed. Is it set speed? No, how is it speed? Speed, fly speed, uh, set fly speed. Ah, yeah, so this actually, I just put a bit of effort into making sure that um, the CLJ doc build works correctly so we can find the same thing here fly speed um, and then also set fly speed so these are probably handy to, to keep around uh, not everything has proper doc strings yet but 
you know, we're getting there. I, I, I have tried to put a bit of effort into that, but it's an ongoing thing anyway. Um, so yeah, if we say set fly speed, well, what's the current fly speed? What kind of, uh, yeah, so what I'll, I'll usually do is have something at the top here, def me, um, all right, so that I can do stuff like that. Actually, maybe also something to, so there's lock, which returns you, which gives you a map. There's also X, Y, Z, which just gives you like a three element vector. Um, and most uh, witchcraft methods functions, which take some kind of location thing, can work with either of these or with the actual object from bucket, like a, a location object transparently, um, which is quite nice. Um, and I'll, I'll be showing more of that. So, okay, our flying speed is 0 0.1. So if we just make it like 0 0.5, uh, then maybe we can already go a lot faster here to find a nice biome. Getting some mushrooms here. It's a whole lot of uh, some big trees. Uh, let's just think called. Yeah, and so, okay, when you start doing that, you do notice that it might start struggling a little bit with keeping up with the rendering. But that's fine, we'll get there eventually. More water. Uh, okay, all right, we got some planes here. This is actually what I was looking for. Just so, you know, I can kind of see what I'm doing. All right, how about we just put a nice Christmas tree right here. Um, so I am looking at uh, facing west towards negative x and my uh, current location, that's my current location. Let's just do that so that we roughly know, let's call that the anchor and just go behind a little bit. So, okay, so for instance, if we say uh, set block uh, at the anchor of, uh, I don't know, let's say uh, spruce, is spruce block or just spruce? No, spruce, well, spruce log, spruce log, I guess we should use. Yeah, all right, cool. Um, okay, yeah, and so here, what I will do is, um, a technique that I've used a lot, uh, basically a, a list comprehension of for loop with X, Y, Z ranges. Um, so let's say it's like 15 wide, uh, or actually let's maybe say like from minus, minus eight to eight, y, y is the height. So we're just gonna go like 35 high, I don't know. Uh, and Z is the other axis. So this, this basically gives us a big um, a box, like sort of a, you know, extruded rectangle. Um, and now we're gonna, we're gonna carve that out. Um, so let's say for instance, if, um, X and Z are zero, then it's sort of uh, the the stem, you know, the, the the actual trunk of the tree. So then we want it to be uh, X Y Z spruce lock. Yeah. Um, actually, let's do this for now. Okay, so this gives us something like that. Um, and now we can say uh, map or the witchcraft at this to our anchor. Um, so now it's sort of offset. Uh, actually, I guess I should swap it around, then it should maintain the yes and then I, we should be able to just pass this to set blocks 
All right, so there's our trunk. Ooh, it's already pretty high, but that's cool. That's cool. Um, let's undo that. Mm -hmm. um, right now, so if right if this is the case, then it's that. Uh, actually, let's make this a cont. Uh, so that's the stem, and then we wanna. So based on the height, okay. So um, if y, um, let's say the first five, well, first four actually don't be good. First like the lowest four, okay, or is that the lowest three, something like that. Um, we we just leave blank and then from, from there on, we kind of want to get this, this pointy three going, uh, three. Um, so these are all the Y's above four. And now what we do is, um, Let's get the distance right from uh, x zero y to zero zero zero. So basically, this is like to figure out how far from the center of the tree this block is that we're looking at. So, so what we're doing here is basically like looping over every single block in this big box of blocks, and then kind of carving out what we want there. And so what we're doing with distance, like this is sort of our, our trick to get circular things. Um, so let's say if the distance uh, is smaller than, uh, so yeah, we're going from minus eight to eight. Uh, let's say it's smaller than five. Uh, all right, let's do this and um, spruce. Leaves. Um, mm, yeah, so now we get some nils here. Um, let's just say, uh, do we have like a compact? No, the, the, yeah, I guess we can remove nil. That works, right? What is the idiomatic way to do this? Uh, no, that does not work. Oh, keyword, right? Yeah, so we actually want X, Y, Z, spruce leaves. Okay, so. <laughs> oh, and those leaves immediately start disappearing because they're too far from the stem. That's interesting. But also, this is not exactly what I wanted. Um, did I get this right? Uh, uh, so yeah, I think this is maybe what I wanted. No, now we get nothing. Okay, so the distance, even though this is x, oh x y x z. Uh, the rest that seems right. Okay, yeah, so that already starts to look kind of circulary, right? Um, as high, let's maybe say 25-ish. Um, and now we just want to kind of have it slope towards the top. Um, so this five here is going to depend on y. Uh, and we want it to go between, uh, okay, so how about we um, divide y by what does that do? Yeah, so now it's upside down. Okay, but that's already uh, pretty good. Um, 25 minus y. Uh, and I guess here, this is where the... No, the other way around. Eight minus y. 
Yeah, that's already getting there, right? Uh, let's maybe go a little more still. Cool. Um, so there's the start of our Christmas tree, and then tomorrow we can maybe put some uh, some decoration in it and stuff. So, yeah. Hope y'all like that. See you tomorrow. Bye.